Welcome back to Upstart Epoxy, epoxy that you can trust. Stay tuned in this video, folks. We're gonna go over some basic tips and tricks on working with epoxy and wood from going to deep pour, to art resin, to tabletop. So stick around and let's enjoy the ride. And we're back, folks. So what we wanted to do is make a little video for three of our benchmark products to give you some pointers, some pro tips, and some do's and don'ts for when you get started on making your own projects. The first one we're gonna start off with is Deep Pour. Now Deep Pour is such an awesome product because what you can do is you can pour up to two inches of the deep pour, which is part A, the epoxy resin, and part B, the hardener. Now you always wanna remember that deep pour is best poured in a two to one ratio. That's two parts of A, epoxy resin, and one part of the hardener, part B. The great thing about deep pour is that you can pour like say dining room tables, coffee tables. It gives you the latitude to really make more of a product with using epoxy because it allows for more volume to be used and that's key. The best thing about it as well is when you mix colors, you can just do whatever you want, whatever your mind can create. You can usually do it with deep pour folks. It gives you the freedom and flexibility to pour more. Now let's move on to art resin. Art resin is a really fun epoxy to use because it's perfect for like trinkets or charms or pendants or ornaments, stuff like that. But the cool thing about it is it's versatile and it's multifunctional, folks. You can also use it if you don't have any tabletop and you got a little bit of extra art resin laying around, you can use it to do flood coats, just like we did with these coasters or anything else that you have that might need a flood coat. Another cool thing about art resin is the fact that it's got a workability time of 35 minutes. That's really great, especially if you're doing layered pours or if you're trying to do like a clear pour that allows for you to like mix in a color pour to maybe like capture a swirl that's suspended. And if you're making a charm or like an earring set or a necklace or a pendant, something like that, that's the great and versatile thing about art resin as well. I see a lot of makers making like geodes and stuff like that, where it's a real thin pour of epoxy and then they sprinkle like little rocks or little crystals or whatever around it. Art resin is perfect for that type of stuff, guys. And it's perfect for swirling, especially when you hit it with some mica pigments. Try some of the ones from Upstart Epoxy if you haven't already. I guarantee you, mica pigments and art resin together are ideal. And last, but certainly not least, is tabletop. Tabletop, folks, is another versatile epoxy that you can use to create beautiful and stunning projects. You can use it for flood coats. You can use it to make charcuterie boards, um, pendants, whatever you want to use. Now, the thing with using tabletop is you want to get its see-through quality out of it if you're going to use it for a flood coat because it seals whatever you're pouring it over to flood, it will preserve that piece forever. And that's the strongest quality about tabletop. Next, if you're gonna pour any of our products in a form, you always wanna prepare your forms for success, folks. That's the key thing. We're using a nail gun here to pop these um, sides into this mold that we constructed. But after we're done doing that, we're gonna definitely need to put some silicone along that Tyvek tape. That way there's no leaks at all. Leaks are horrible when they happen to you and I wouldn't wish that on any worker, trust me. So it's always good to have key placement. You always wanna level your molds because you, if the mold isn't level, then the product isn't gonna be level when you're done. And you're gonna run into a lot of problems, whether you're planing it or trying to flatten it, you're gonna have one side thicker than the other and you just can't have that. So it's always wise to tape, if you're gonna use wood, it's always wise to tape with sheathing tape. I use Tyvek, I use Sure Tape, whatever you can. As long as it's sheathing tape, heck, even packing tape works, folks. But like I said earlier, you wanna make sure that you get those beads of silicone everywhere on every joint, nook and cranny on that form, folks. You do not want a leak. I will do the inside first, then I'll flip it over and I'll do the underside of the form just in case something 
leaks through uh, what I did on the top part or on the bottom part. I just don't want any leaks whenever I do anything. So it's always best to just go the extra mile, tape every seam that's on that mold and silicone it. That way you don't ever have to worry about a leak, folks. And then it's always good to get, um, I like to get some hot glue and I'll glue the pieces of wood to the form itself. That way it doesn't come up when you pour epoxy. I don't, I hate using those big clunky crossbars that you can use on some forms that you see out there. I mean, they're just, they're okay. They work. Um, I'm not going to knock them and say that they don't because they do, but I like to take pride in my pores and I like for people to see exactly what I see when I'm doing a pour. And you may like that too. And if that's the case, put some hot glue on the bottom of your HDPE mold or of your wood mold and get after it. You can do a beautiful pour, post it on Instagram, post it on YouTube, whatever, and it looks a heck of a lot better than having them on crossbars or them big old clunky kettle balls or whatever on your wood. So quick checklist. You tape your pieces of your mold, you assemble your pieces of your mold, then you silicone all the ends and joints of your mold, and if you wanna go the extra mile, silicone the bottom as well. That way, when you're ready to mix your epoxy like we are right here, you can pour it with the peace of mind that you're not going to get any leaks, waste your time, waste your client's time, and most importantly, waste money. Because I don't think I know a single person that enjoys doing that. And here we have it, folks. Check this out. We just poured, this is over two inches of deep pour epoxy. This is about two and a half inches of deep pour epoxy and leak free. What did I tell you? If you do it this way, I can only guarantee you that it's going to work. Now let's talk about refining your piece for success. It's always good to clean up your mess, folks, in anything that you do whenever you're working with uh, epoxy and wood. And it does get messy, trust me. It gets real messy. So whether it's taking off the high points or sanding to perfection, you don't want any scratch marks in your wood. You always wanna go over everything and make sure that you don't have any of those little pigtails you want to plane your piece solid and flat. You want that piece to be able to sit on a flat surface and not budge an inch, folks. Because you figure people are buying this from you, you want to give them the best product that you can give them. The best product that describes you as a maker. And if you have to go the extra mile and get you a slab jig router or a planer, it's well worth the money, folks. Now, you can use... A hand sander, you can use a hand planer to do it. It may take you a little longer, sure. But you know what? You can go to bed at night knowing that you did the right thing for that person that you're working for. That you made them the best piece that reflected you, folks. And that's what I like to tell people. This uh, method right here, slab jig routing, will totally, totally keep your piece super flat especially for when you're laying it in the mold because you don't want any epoxy to get underneath and it will it will find its way under there guaranteed but the amount of it is what you can control so if you want very little get yourself one and do that to your pieces you can also get you a regular planer like this this dewalt planer cost me 600 bucks but it was well worth it this belt sander cost me like 80 bucks it's well worth it to get the bigger tools to ensure, most importantly, that your client and that you're happy with what you make. You can make pieces like this, folks, just like I told you by following these steps and tips that I told you about today. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more hot videos just like this one. Once again, this has been Steve with Upstart and we'll see you next time.